I put it together a little bit, and I know it looks put together a lot, but it isn't. Uh, if you were to shake the bike, it, half this stuff would just fall off. It's just kind of all sitting there. And the reason I put all the stuff on is to see how I need to route my exhaust. I need it to pass right through here. And so I'm going to need to cut it. And so I've already marked it that I'm going to cut it somewhere in here. The guard's in the way. This bolt's busted off anyway. So I'm going to cut the guard shorter. Um, cut the muffler off so that our exhaust becomes a two-piece exhaust. Uh, I'm going to have to put make this bend a little steeper because right now the muffler kind of sticks straight back and it needs to tilt up more. piece exhaust. So this needs to bend in up here. So this hoop is too wide. Need to bend it inward because my flange up here needs to be sitting flat and instead it's sitting slightly cocked. So first things first is to get this guy bent a little bit tighter. awesome. Let's see now about the muffler. So the muffler, I want it to sit oh boy that's nowhere even close. Hmm. No matter what I do, bending it, I just can't get it where I want it. It's just way too low. And in order to bend this enough, so right now it's coming out here, I would need to bend it clear up here like this to get even remotely the right angle. And even then, where the end of my uh, head pipe comes in, it would end up like right here. It just isn't working. Oops. Where my head pipe comes into the muffler is going to bend up like right here. There's just no real way to get this exhaust angle to work like this. And so what I came up with is putting it in upside down. So if I put it in upside down, I'm way closer. So I think I'm going to have to probably cut these tabs off, well new tabs, all the <laughs> part numbers and everything are going to end up upside down, but uh, that's probably okay. This little inspection plate will be at the top instead of the bottom. It doesn't seem to have any grains in it or anything, so we're going to mount this upside down, which means now I actually have to straighten this bend out more straight. Yeah, bud.
got this bent the other way so that I can put this in upside down. And I got it pretty good. I want to probably have it live right about there, which seems about in line with where the exhaust header is going to be. And there's quite a bit of overlap, so I'm hoping that I might be able to cut this, spread it out, and then re-weld it so that the header exhaust can slip inside of this. Um, I've managed to open it up so that it's now big enough to go around this socket, which is actually slightly larger than that pipe, but just by a hair. And so that'll give a little room for some silicone, some high temp silicone, to seal these together. This side I may be able to fill that gap with a weld. This side, not so much. And so what I plan on doing is taking some of the leftover scrap material from the frame um, and cutting that shape out of this with the grinder. So I'll then put a patch in there and have two welds and hopefully that'll seal everything up. Yeah, I think I can work with that. Just need to grind on him a little. Well, that ain't too bad. All right, it's all welded in there. I put a little tiny spacer on this side and a much larger one on this side. I've already ground on this side. Um, I forgot to take the socket out uh, when I did this side just now, so hopefully I can pound that guy out of there. Uh, I hope I didn't weld it into my exhaust system. But uh, it's now got a flange on it, so hopefully this will work as uh, the coupler between my header pipe and my muffler now. Alright, I think the exhaust is about figured out. Um, it's taken a lot of bending and tweaking and massaging, but it slides on there pretty nice. And then it's going to sit right about here, um, which I like that angle. I'm going to put this bracket like this. And that will give me that angle. So weld on one more bracket here and the muffler will be done. Then I want to put one in the middle uh, right there uh, on the header to support it. And then we can cross the exhaust off the list. Pretty sweet. All right, it's getting a lot closer to finish looking. 
the exhaust leak I gave it makes it sound kind of mean. With our exhaust routed and pretty much finished, uh, it's time to do our last major hurdle of the project, and that is we need to get this carburetor pointed at that air box back there. It's pointed the wrong way right now. It needs to be lower in that way. So I'm going to strip off of a bunch of the plastics and seat, drain the carburetor, um, use this intake manifold to trace out some flanges and then we're going to have to go get some one inch tubing to do some cutting and make us an intake. I've never done anything like this, no idea how I'm going to do it. Let's get started. Okay, it looks like just to my eye that those are two identical flanges, that that would fit there and it would fit, fit there. So in a pinch a guy could actually use this thing backwards. If I were to bolt it on there backwards it would be sideways and pointed the wrong way. So, can't use this for anything other than a template. So I think I'm just gonna make two flanges shaped like this and then weld the pipe between them. Sounds simple. Wow, that is horrible. It is like the most horrible bit I've ever had to use. Ugh. Ooh, little warm, little warm. All right, so where does the carburetor kind of where I want it to go? And I'm gonna try to use this factory air boot. It's too big for the flange of my carburetor, so I'm gonna have to somehow get it down there. But my plan is, is to put, ooh, too hot to hold. Is to put one of these on the back of the motor, like so. If you guys can see that. The other one, on the carburetor. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. Oh, I can't hold. Ooh. And then weld a tube between them. So these are ready. Well, kind of. I mean, I'll clean them up a little more. But I've got a weld on them, so I'm not going to do too much. Now, the next step is a tube between them. And it just so happens that I've had for a few years. Oh, look at that. I never even got the stickers out. 
stickers. Um, this old muffler. And this muffler broke. I can't remember what about it broke. Uh, the internals broke, I think. Uh, the, uh, I think that it rotted out in, in here, and that perforated piece of metal that goes through here was no good. And so I replaced it. The bike's long gone. And I just couldn't make myself throw this thing away. And I've had it for spare parts. And it looks to me like this tube might be about the right size. It's already got one bend in it. So... I think I can make that work right there. But well, it's close anyway. <sighs> Should I tack that up? Alright, I tacked it in three places on both sides. So let's take it out and see if I got it lined up good enough or not. I think it's gonna work. Maybe. I sure hope so, because this has been a lot of work. Alright, I owe you guys an apology. I've gotten busy and I've picked away at the bike a little bit. I haven't worn the camera while I do it because um, it's just been here and there, just quick things. Um, I got the rear brakes put on. Um, I had to drill, auger this hole, drop this bolt about a quarter inch, maybe even three eighths to get it to clear. It's still not good enough. I'm going to have to drill that some more. but. I realized to get this hose through here without taking the reservoir off, I would have to remove the exhaust. And so I pulled the exhaust off and painted it, uh, routed this through, got it up there. Um, so that's good to go. Intake's all bolted in, got all the leaks are fixed. With that, I have started it up and ran it a few times. That high temp paint uh, is not high temp enough. Uh, started burning it off, stunk like crazy. Um, what else have I been doing? Oh, I got the uh, front brake master cylinder. I had to order this on eBay. The bike didn't come with one. I had to get a new front brake lever. I ordered that brand new. Um, fled the front brakes. That was a giant pain. Air bubble did not want to come out. Tonight, I put the chain on. And none of my chains were long enough. This distance here is longer than it was on the CR80. So, and I had to do that to clear the engine. You know, we already chopped it, chopped the actual engine to slide it back as far as we could. Still couldn't get it back as far as it used to be. That's okay. You can see the chain changes direction here pretty severely. We'll see if that becomes an issue. Anyway, I took the XR100 chain and the CR80 chain, spliced them together. So I have a master link here, another master link back here. Not ideal. But I'm thinking that my gearing might be all wrong anyway. So we're just going to run with these worn out old sprockets and this horribly rusted chain uh, with splices, you know, two master links in it until I know what it is. Uh, last few things, carburetor still leaks like a sieve. Uh, the float bowl is not closing off strong enough to stop the flu uh, fuel. So I've got a, a dirty plunger or something in there. Um, I did get a eBay side plate so I need to get this guy bolted on there um, it does clear so I'm not going to chop it or modify it at all I'm just going to bolt it on like that so we are really close to being able to ride this thing next time I turn this camera on 
I will probably have a whole bunch of stuff bolted on this thing. Oh, I had to buy a new air filter. Uh, that's sitting in that box there. Uh, new clutch cables in there as well. Uh, air filter had rotted off. Uh, it's still a whole bunch of it's still stuck in there. Um, speaking of the clutch cable, um, it routes down through here behind the exhaust. Oh, yeah, I've done a few things. And I had to bend this mount uh, towards the camera this way um, in order for it to clear the carburetor. Barely squeezes between the carburetor and the exhaust. Hopefully it doesn't get too hot. I had to add a spacer in there to get it to fit properly. The clutch cable's maxed out. It's an old worn out clutch cable. It's got kinks and bends and stuff in it. It does not feel very good. So I got a new one of those. I also bent the Kickstarter. So now it's up higher. It used to be kind of down here and back and then over. So I've moved it up quite a bit and then heated it up and bent it because this couldn't fold. It was folding down and hitting about here. So I bent it so now it folds back there. And I think that's going to be what I, I do. So don't have to buy a Kickstarter. Win-win. That's the update on the bike. Oh, I did get the rear tire fixed. Uh, it had a flat. Uh, this is a used tire that someone gave me that's barely used. So that's nice. Got, you know, fairly fresh rubber on the back. She's coming along. Like I said, I hope uh, next time I turn this camera on, it's to ride it. I need to get the air filter on it. I think it's still a little lean. But I think the air filter will fix that. That's third gear. I come to a dead stop. <laughs> okay, that's fifth gear. Top, high gear. Let's see if I can do this. It's going to be a little hard on the clutch. Runs and drives. Definitely, definitely have some tuning and adjusting and massaging to do, but it's technically a functioning motorcycle. Thanks for watching.